Hello and welcome back to another devlog for my Godot VR flight sim. In the last video, I introduced heat-seeking missiles, propellers, split rendering, and a prototype physics interaction system. Since the last video, Godot released the 4.3 update, which included a change to rendering, which makes the split view rendering system obsolete. Luckily, this means I have one less system to contend with. The first edition is a GUI in 3D system, which can be interacted with using the VR controllers. To progress in converting this project into more of a playable game, I added a main menu um, using these 3D GUIs. There are options to load into some of the other scenes, including an updated version of my 2023 Godot XR Jam entry, uh, which is called Foggy Flight Sim, as well as a tunnel race game mode that's a blatant ripoff of Jetborn Racing. These menus are interesting because they use the default Godot UI nodes, meaning that complex UI is as simple to configure as normal 2D UI is. Controller inputs from the VR controllers are converted to mouse inputs, which are able to be injected into the 3D UI. This logic is even more simplified when implementing for flat screen games using the keyboard and mouse because Godot has some built-in logic for 3D object selection. As part of the greater menu functionality, I also implemented a wrist menu with options that allow the player to return to the main menu and quit the game. In the future, I plan to give players an access to an options window for any other debug features or game settings and options that need to be changed. I think it would be interesting to use this system for touchscreen devices in the future. I think using touch pads, touch screens throughout the game could be very immersive and interesting for the player. By far the most important addition this update is the new physics object interaction system. I've noticed that recent VR games either completely fail to utilize physics interaction, or the physics interaction is noticeably slow and delayed behind the player's movements. To remedy this, I have opted for an approach that I would place somewhere between Bone Labs and Hot Dogs Horseshoes and Hand Grenades um, in terms of responsiveness, being slightly more responsive than Bone Labs but not quite as responsive as H3VR. This is because H3VR cheats and doesn't do it physically. The way I have achieved this without increasing the physics tick rate, I calculate the acceleration made by the controller and attempt to apply that same acceleration on the held object. Interestingly enough, this is very close to the approach used in H3VR. Unfortunately, if you apply these accelerations directly by using linear velocity, you lose the ability to easily limit the player's maximum strength and correctly apply an equal and opposite force on the player body. For linear forces, the relationship between force and acceleration is simple. Described by Newton's second law of motion, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Limiting the player's strength can be easily done by limiting this value. Angular forces, or torque, are not as simple to accommodate. Inertia defines how much a body resists torque, acting like angular mass. Where mass is a single value that is used directly in most contexts, inertia can be described as a matrix. Fortunately, combining the inertia matrix of two objects is a simple addition operation. Where this becomes more complicated is integrating the effect of the held item's offset. When the held item's center of mass is positioned away from the hand, there is an extra factor of inertia added. This can be thought of an added leverage between the hand and the held item. Luckily, the exact formula to create an inertia matrix for this effect is well published, because otherwise I would have never been able to figure it out on my own. Because we have properly compensated for mass and inertia on held objects, this provides a starting point of consistent responsiveness and stability. Currently, the project physics only run at 60 Hz for performance reasons, um, so I would like to include interpolation of the hand and held items movement. Interpolation would provide a noticeable improvement to the usability of these items. While increasing physics tick rate to 90 hertz is still reasonable, currently I'm not looking to work on interpolation yet. During the development of this system, I encountered a few issues with physics joints, the solution for which I believe is valuable for any project that uses physics joints. First, as has been extensively documented, the default Godot physics engine does not have most physics joints implemented. Luckily, since very early in this project, I have used Godot Jolt, which increases performance as well as implements all joint types. 
Because we have full mathematical accountability for the forces generated by the player's hands, we can apply an opposite force to the player's body, which would allow the player to move their bodies using their arms, doing pull-ups, pushing objects away from their body, or pulling themselves along physics objects. As I finished work on the physics interaction system, I could only think of one feature, a wheelchair. The interaction between the player and the wheelchair is intricate, requiring physical consistency in all regards, both for the player sitting in the seat as well as the player grabbing the wheels and making them spin. I also want to explore other odd physical interactions like handheld thrusters, jetpacks, hang gliders, parachutes, paragliders, any type of thing that traditional games can't really get right due to limitations, but I think VR would excel at. These will have to wait for a future dev cycle, because I gotta wrap this one up and get a video out and be done with it. The usability of the wheelchair is limited due to how the hand joints are configured. Currently the hand joints act as completely fixed joints, and in this circumstance it is undesirable for the hand joints to limit rotation between the wheel and the player's hand. An important feature for any physics interaction system is grab points, designated areas that will cause the hand to snap into an expected position or orientation. I have achieved this using area 3D nodes, which the physical hands detect and accommodate. However, the addition of a physics interaction system poses an interesting question for the future of the project. So far, the project has used a system of XR interactables, area 3D nodes with custom logic for touching, grabbing, holding, moving, and releasing. This is a non-physical system. Naturally, these two systems overlap and even compete for functionality in some circumstances, such as when the player sits in a vehicle and interacts with the controls. XR interactables aren't suited for all use cases, but they are lightweight and unaffected by external forces and systems. This makes them valuable for certain circumstances where you don't want physics to get in the way. Excessively large, two-handed inputs and inputs that expect a physical response are best suited for physical interaction. Things like levers, steering wheels, I don't know, jeopardy spin the wheel type things. Those would be better for physics interactions. In the future, I plan for XR interactables to be used primarily for finger-sized interactions like buttons, switches, and sliders, and physics interactions to be used for anything larger like steering wheels or control sticks. As a demonstration of the grip positions, I created a remote control for the quadcopter so that you could fly it in VR. This shows the fun part of game development after you worked off some tech debt and created a new system you are free to easily and quickly add fun new features. It really is difficult to describe the cool factor of controlling a drone using a remote control inside a VR world. It also saves a lot of money being able to make all of your fun little toys and experiments in VR and then using them rather than having to pay for them in real life. As I played with the drone, I thought it would be nice to add a seat where you could sit and relax as you fly the drone. The secret about this bench is that I haven't added a feature to the grip positions on the controller so that inputs made while holding the grip position are consumed. So what you'll see happening in some of this footage here is that as I try to control the throttle on the drone, I'm walking forward and backwards. And so <laughs> the being able to sit in a seat that you're stuck in prevents that kind of unwanted behavior. and. It's sneaky and I get to finish this dev cycle without fixing that problem. The benefit of all this being in VR is that it's possible to do things that would otherwise be unfeasible due to cost, availability, or legality concerns. I added some quality of life and polish features to the F-16. When I presented the Seeker system in the previous devlog, I mentioned how it would easily and naturally accommodate countermeasures. This is still the case, and to demonstrate I have added flares. They are very unbalanced because I haven't taken the time to flesh out and tune them to be the right temperature or size. This makes it very easy to evade the incoming missiles. Missiles can also lock onto the sun because I've configured the sun to act like any other heat source. You've been hearing some of the new noises and alerts from the cockpit. Warning, altitude, pull up, warning, altitude, pull up, warning, altitude, pull up, warning, altitude. 
I have added a handful of sounds and cockpit warnings because it helps to give a better indication of what is happening with the plane. The RWR uses the same base detection system as the missile heat seekers, identifying missiles in the vicinity and filtering only for the missiles that are headed towards the plane at some significant velocity. This means that it won't alarm if you fire a missile or the missile is fired around you, only when missiles are headed towards you in a significant way. I believe at this point the project has gotten to a state where I am finished with most of the tech debt, and I think that the pace of development will increase. I would like to take some time to explore some of the ideas and concepts that weren't able to fit into this devlog. If you have any other ideas you'd like to see in this project, leave a comment as I love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. No way that this ship <laughs> would be able to fly. Yeah. The hovercraft, not caring what humans think is impossible, flies anyways. Fuck you. Huh? You say fuck it's me? It's just like fucking. Can I come in for a runway me. landing? Hold up. Hold up. No <laughs> way. No fucking way, bro. No way on God. Hold up.
I gotta decrease my speed without, like, or I gotta like decrease my attitude without decreasing my speed too much. Oh, I think I lost too much speed. I'm gonna crash into the water. Or no, I think I'm gonna pull through it. I think I'm gonna pull through it just the perfect amount. Okay. Holy shit! I'm gonna make the runway landing. Oh, too low, no, too low. We too yeah. low. We too low. No, we're just right. We're just right. Oh my god, dude! Big uh, dang yeah. owl. It pitches up. Fuck. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Bing dang owl. Bing dang owl. Holy poop. <laughs> Holy poop. <laughs> Semi. Oh, I can't use those either. I can't use anything that doesn't have crosshairs in the scope. Oh, there's a guy. Oh. 